Have you ever felt like you just can't do anything right in Counter-Strike aim-wise at least and then there's other days where you hit shots and you're like What? <laughs> yeah, I've, I've had that too. I'm, I'm pretty sure you can relate. Like in a week's time, I went from 14,000 elo-ish to like 10,000. Then there's other days like I think it was Friday maybe where I shot through walls multiple times going like three rounds with just no scopes and going up to a point where i'm like holy shit should i just report myself i, I don't understand what's going on the one problem and the one thing we all have in common though is the fact that there's always going to be somebody calling you a hacker when you are able to do that and when somebody else is able to do that but you're in the space where you just can't shoot straight and the, the barrel's bent then you're probably going to call them a hacker the reality of the situation is not everybody is hacking and there's, in reality, not even close to as many people hacking as you would actually think that it would be. Hey guys, it's 1O here and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to dive deep into, or semi-deep at least, into the world of hackers and how you can look out for them and how you can identify them and why most people are probably not hacking even though you're pretty sure they are. The thing is, people who hack have a tendency to not care if people see it like they do it pretty much blatantly even though they might not want to it's kind of like a it just happens because i mean if you can see somebody through a wall you're bound to aim in, in some sort of a way through that wall or if you have aim lock or aim assistance up to a certain point you can see wait this person is probably hacking because he's a 7k that shoots like a 20k that's where another problem come in Smurfs. There's a lot of them. I mean a lot. There's there's a lot more Smurfs than there are hackers. Because the problem is, when you go over a certain elo, let's say 15,000, 16,000, then the cheater problem becomes really, really apparent. Like, I mean, then, then, then it becomes an actual problem. Because most of the cheaters play really well because they're cheating. And therefore, if they're not caught, they're gonna be climbing the ranks pretty fast and it just it, it bundles up it makes it absolutely insanely hard to get to a high rank without encountering just a bunch of cheaters but anything lower than like 15k yeah i i there's not a lot there's actually not a lot of cheaters but there is a lot of smurfs the problem is smurfing technically if you look at the actual definition of smurfing is also a form of cheating because you're giving yourself an unfair advantage where other people need to actually play to like better themselves and climb the ranks to a place where they would be so somebody that's let's say skill wise a 10 or 11 thousand elo player it's not like they're stuck there but that's their play style that's how they play that's how good they are so they're comfortable there now comes a like 20k smurf that's playing on an 11k account that just annihilates the experience of the game for that 11k player and i do understand that i have sympathy with people that need to smurf because their ranks are just undeniably godlike because of all the hackers and the cheaters and stuff but at the end of the day smurfing is still a form of cheating smurfing doesn't necessarily mean you own more than one account Smurfing is when you play on a lower ranked account for the benefit of being better than other players or achieving more than you would have normally. If you're doing that then obviously you're wrong. If you just have multiple accounts because let's say you like the weekly drops, I mean technically that's still wrong but it's okay because you don't hinder the experience for other people. So let's say you want more drops, weekly drops, you have two maybe three accounts and then you have those you know drops coming and everything is being sent to one account and you get more out of that i mean yes it's wrong but you're just playing the system it's it's like a loophole so is it really that wrong i mean that's a multi-billion dollar company and if you get like a case drop and you sell that somebody else is gonna buy it steam still gets money which means valve still gets money and the other person that bought it is gonna open it which means valve gets more money so i don't really think they care that much about that whole aspect of it but having a let's say 8k account elo wise account 
but you're actually skill wise 16k that's just unfair and very very wrong there's no way around it that is just wrong at the end of the day i'm really sorry now let's get into the fun part identifying a cheater and or smurf now first of all if you want to identify a cheater the first thing you would do is look at his profile while you're playing with or against that person if his profile is brand new you can see it only has like a few hours on on counter strike or even if the profile is private but he doesn't have any badges or anything on cs it mostly means that it is a very new account you would at least have a loyalty badge or a 10 year birthday coin badge if the account is somewhat i don't want to say old but at this point you know counter-strike global offensive was played almost a year ago so it is at least almost a year old than if he has the loyalty badge Preferably the 5 and 10 year veteran coins is a somewhat of an indication that yes this is an old account which technically yes I know I can see you writing and typing in the comments that it can be a bot account but most of the time cheaters don't actually buy accounts because it's such a hassle it's just they're just gonna cheat and get a new account if it's necessary might as well just spend that on a prime account because the VAC system is still the second thing you can do is you can look at his profile comments to see how many people actually accuse this person of cheating. Now, it doesn't indicate if somebody is actually cheating, but it does indicate that somebody is at least suspicious in more than just one match. So you can use that as like a, okay, I just want to confirm my suspicions about this person or I have a little bit more evidence or more people backing me up on this. And then obviously the third one would be if the player just plays godlike ways like 20 for 2 and it's a 11k elo person you're like 10k or it's a 14k elo person you're like 13k and that person is just dunking on you extremely hard where the rest of his team is not doing much that's the thing that kind of sets it apart is if the you can look if the entire team is doing very well or just one person is doing really 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 well and the rest of the team is like down there that's usually a good indicator that somebody is at least a smurf or a cheater the other problem we have here like i said is the smurfs now a few ways to look if somebody is a smurf is obviously the first one being he's playing much better than his rank should be but still looking somewhat legit the second one would be if he is top fragging pretty well not not godlike level well like the cheaters but pretty well let's say 15 for 7 or 15 for 5 the way the rest of his team is like 10 for 8 or whatever the case may be there then it's usually kind of an indication that the person is a smurf and then the other thing is smurfs aren't usually brand new accounts it's usually accounts that has been played on a while but it's they're not played on that often they're, they're only played on when the person wants to play with his friends or if the person wants to play with their like lower ranked account because the higher ranks full of cheaters or they're tilted or whatever the case may be there one other good thing bonus tip is get yourself litify get the profile on litify so every single match you play after that you will get a message from litify giving you stats on another side on uh, like your performance and stuff but also you can view other people's profiles and that way you can see how many matches they actually actively play i have seen a heck load of smurfs that way where you can see the person's only played like let's say like 10 matches in the past few months or they have gone multiple months without playing anything but they're still like godlike that can also be an indication of them playing something like face it but you will see with the age of the account how much that person actually played the game most people playing face it tend to play more face it than matchmaking because matchmaking is so broken so don't take anything for granted and take everything with a grain of salt even the stuff that i say on this channel now you know just because i'm talking about it doesn't mean i'm right all right with that being said i really hope you guys can actually identify which people are smurfs which people are hacking and which people are just having a very very good day if you have found any of these crazy people that you found is not actually cheating but very very good let me know in the comments i would actually love to know more about your journeys and stuff like that and then be sure to check out the live streams every single night from mondays to fridays at 7 30 pm cat except wednesdays and uh, i'll catch you there we can play together sometime cheers guys on there that's usually a good indicator that somebody is at least have I We'll see 
with the age of the account how much that person actually because matchmaking is so broken so yeah take everything for granted don't take anything for granted and take any take every 